Okay, so I've been wanting to make this video for a little while. It's going to be about holster safety or holstering safety. And, uh, you know, unless you're carrying a gun overseas or day-to-day -day for a job, more than likely the most dangerous thing that you're going to encounter is holstering that firearm or reholstering it or putting it away or taking it out. And uh, so I'm going to go over some things and show you some things that um, you probably should avoid or be aware of, especially if you're new to concealed carry. And um, even some guys that have been doing this for a while, you know, the only reason that something bad hasn't happened yet is because you got lucky. So uh, this gun is safe. Okay, so one thing that you will see people do is have an undershirt under their cover garment. Now, one thing that can happen this shirt gets loose and bunched up. Some people don't have, some people have different height sweat guards. Some have low, so they bend over, it doesn't poke them. So one thing that can happen is, when you push this pistol in, the shirt can be drug inside of your holster, and you'll feel a little resistance. And if you do, you need to stop. Take that gun back out, because you don't want that holster taking in foreign objects, like shirts, or uh, pull tabs, um, this bungees on your jacket or anything else, or this, or, or your shirt, um, your, your cover garment. You don't want to have this kind of loose and not have your cover garment cleared and try to put that back in. Look at that. You kind of force that back in to where it engages your trigger. Okay, the other thing, when um, pulling your gun out and drawing your gun, if you are trying to set a land speed record while uh, you know carrying appendix, and you might be if you're under stress, I've seen this. You go to reach down, try to get a good draw, but you miss and go under. You catch that belt but you're trying to grab for the gun, so what happens is the gun starts coming out, then that finger drops in right into the trigger guard. Also, when you're, if you're sitting in your vehicle, you're like this. When you draw your gun out, you're usually covering your legs, or covering a part of your leg. to get the gun where it needs to be. Um, Alright, so uh, <clears throat> here is two stories. Here are two stories. Alright, there's a little pin in this trigger right there for the safety. Now there are some aftermarket triggers that are metal that have a pin. I think some may be roll pin, some type of little pin. I think it was a Barrett Fallbush class where they were doing dry fire before the class started, just to kind of get familiar with the trigger pull and you know get ready for some live fire. Now, what had happened is the guy went to put his pistol back into the holster, and that pin had backed out. So when he put his gun back in, that pin snagged his holster, and guess what? <laughs> it dry fired in his holster. So. Uh, Luckily, they did, they did some dryer fire first, and they identified that before he loaded a, you know, fresh mag and had something bad happen. Um, the other video is kind of weird. I haven't seen a conclusion to this video, but it was in like a gun shop where a guy was carrying a Glock 43 and a, um, I think a Haley Strategic, like a, what's it like, a, one of his holsters. So he was holstering. He put the gun in. I don't know if it snapped in. He put the gun in. There could have been something in there. And when he went to bend over, bang! You see the guy start limping around. Oh, I've been shot. And uh, so luckily there was a female in the room that was able to put on a tourniquet and uh, take care of that before you know that guy lost a, a major amount of blood. And she was ready. Most people don't have uh, tourniquets in the office. So... Uh, that's just another thing you want to be aware of. And I haven't seen an outcome to that video. Um, 
I really don't know if that video was staged or if it was real, if some brass or a shirt, something had got in there, or, or what happened. All right, so uh, here's something that you will often see. And people who carry appendix, this is one thing that they say that you will do with a hybrid holster. And this is something else that is also dangerous. When you're holstering, you want to pretend there's a laser beam coming out of that muzzle. And you don't want to cover anything with that laser beam. So what some people do is they will turn the gun in and point that into their hip to clear away for that holster. Now that is a bad practice. You don't want to point the gun at yourself. <laughs> All kinds of bad things could happen as a result of that. But what you want to do to prevent that is just lean your body over. Put the barrel in and go straight down. When the holster's in, you know, stand back up straight. But if something were to happen while holstering here, yes, I might shoot off a piece of my butt. But that's not going to have me bleed out in three minutes. It's still bad, but you know I'm probably going to survive that injury. So you know to kind of recap that, when you holster, don't point your gun in toward yourself. Bring the gun up, cant your body, and holster. Uh, the same thing with appendix. If you have a shirt, an undershirt, or any kind of shirt, or the tails from your cover garment, those can get hung up. You do not want to force material down in your shirt. If you feel any resistance when you're holstering, no matter how you're holstering, if you feel resistance you're not used to, you want to stop. Uh, pull that gun out and see what's in there. Alright, um, let's see, I'm going to put on a duty holster and go over a couple things with that. There's no harm and, uh, and looking at your holster, it doesn't, make, it doesn't make you a rookie or it doesn't make you a noob or whatever people call you. Uh, you can look in your holster, unless you're in some situation where you're by yourself and you have to like maintain you know, vision on something, a visual on something. You can look at your holster. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. Before you look in your duty holster, before you reholster, you need to look in the holster, make sure there's nothing obstructing it. You know, your Penix holster, lift your shirt up, look down in the holster. Same thing, if you can see in your holster, take a second. There's no rush to get your gun reholstered. You know, there's, I don't think anybody's winning, you know, records or winning competitions because they holstered their gun faster than somebody else. So just take a second, you know. Um, you, you hear this a lot, holster reluctantly. So just take your time. Alright, so uh, let me show you something else to be aware of. See these bungee strings on jackets? There's other things on jackets, straps and different things. But these little bungee strings with some type of adjustment. This, this one is closer to the jacket. But this has happened before numerous times. You hear about it a lot in police departments because they're wearing jackets and normally wearing more duty, duty holsters. Say you're wearing this jacket, you know, you have this little pull, pull bungee string dangling in there. Well, you put your gun away, you start beating some resistance, and sometimes that can cause the gun to go off, or you lean a little bit, you know, pull on that string, and next thing you know, the gun's going off. So you want to be aware of that. Don't point the gun towards yourself. Pick the gun up, put it straight in. You can look at the holster. There's no harm in that. All right, so uh, let's see. This is the... Um, probably the most well-known holster out there for being dangerous and uh, I use this holster I don't use it to carry on my person but I use I do use this um, in another um, area all right so this is the circle holster um, I'm pretty sure mine is the one that has been redesigned or reconfigured to put your finger up here more so than it is down there 
And what happens with these um, Blackhawk Serpa holsters, um, you can see a guy who is um, on YouTube that does this to himself. He's in a hurry. He's trying to be quick draw McGraw. He pushes on the pad, probably like this, instead of straight. And when he drug this out, that finger dropped right into his trigger guard and the trigger went off. Now, I've never done that with this Serpa holster. And it's something to be aware of, yes. But that is pretty much what happened. And it can happen on other holsters, just like I showed carrying appendix. It is possible to drag your fingers up, have them catch, and have a finger drop into a trigger guard. If you do have one of these holsters, you want to keep your fingers straight and just push down with your finger and then operate that properly. You don't want to be pushing a whole bunch of tension on it and hooking your finger. This is kind of setting yourself up for failure. Other types of holsters that um, that you'll see them. They're soft holsters or uh, you know, like purse carry or something where you know, the gun's not in a rigid holster that's going to prevent it from having the trigger pulled. So uh, I've seen the sticky holsters and um, any kind of holster like that um, you really want to be careful. Any, any way that that material could possibly be flexed into the trigger guard um, you need to be aware of that. Um, if you have a gun that's not in a holster or with a clip draw, um, I wouldn't carry with a clip draw with a round in the chamber. Uh, that's just waiting to shoot yourself. So, uh, you know, be careful of holsters that are soft, soft material holsters, especially inside the waistband. You, know, you don't want to be rolling around on your floor playing with your kids if you have a, a holster, especially one that is substandard. You know, spend the money, get yourself a good holster. The chances of you, if you live in a nice area, of having to shoot like five bad guys and, you know, fend off a bank robbery, that's probably not going to happen. You know, it could happen, and I'm not saying you shouldn't carry, but you need to not make carrying a gun a hazard to your life or a hazard to your kids or those around you. And to make sure that gun's somewhere where it should be, um, if you have a gun around your house, you might want to consider um, carrying while you're at home and not stashing that gun somewhere where it's accessible to kids. Uh, make sure your kids know not to touch the guns and they're dangerous. Um, you have to convey to them that it is, it is dangerous and the difference between toys and guns. Uh, just make sure your gun is somewhere safe. Make sure it's in a holster that's safe. Um, if you're doing something like purse carry or bag carry, uh, you may want to just store that gun with that around the chamber. Um, you know, you don't need to be fishing for that gun and, and grab a trigger. You don't know if that safety is going to be manipulated or not while it's jingling around in your purse or your tactical man bag. If you take your gun out of the holster and that thing drops, sailing through the air, spinning, whichever way, don't grab the gun. Because more than likely what you're going to do uh, it's gonna, all the stars are going to line up, and you're just going to BAM! And who knows where that gun's going to be pointed. could be pointed back at you. It could be pointed at the person next to you, or you know, who knows. You need to keep, um, you know, if your gun falls, just let it drop. Uh, most guns these days are drop safe, except for uh, SIG 320s and maybe some old 1911s with their heavy firing pins or whatever. But um, if your gun falls, let it hit the ground, even if it's a really expensive gun. It's not worth snagging the trigger and shooting yourself. Don't be a uh, text grubner, grabner. Don't shoot yourself in the leg, because um, your mom doesn't want that phone call.